What is going on everybody and welcome to today's Trading to Glory video. We're going to be talking about bidding effectiveness. We're going to be talking about the inflation of the market and some mistakes in terms of investing that you need to stay away from. Hope you guys enjoy. What is going on, everybody, and welcome to a brand new video on my channel. My name is Sean, aka Elite, and today I want to start off by talking about how effective bidding is in comparison to sniping at this point in the game. Sniping might have worked for the first few hours, but now it's getting more and more difficult as more people are sniping, and also there are different bots and stuff that are evidently starting to make their way into the game, which was inevitable. But unfortunately, that is the case, and we have to adapt to it. With that being said, sniping is getting more difficult. Bidding seems to be staying just as easy. Here's a bidding filter that I started with today on stream, uh, which by the way, if you guys wanna catch those live streams, link is in the description for my Twitch channel. And I went with Brazilian right backs and I went with uh, Argentinian right backs, which are both in demand for advanced SBCs, which we've already uploaded the Hybrid Nations SBC. We've got the Hybrid League SBC coming out later today and then League and Nation Hybrid tomorrow. So I went and, uh, and bid on a bunch of these and you might think, well, that seems like a lot of coins for a right back. Uh, you're spending over 2K for a Danilo. He's not very good. Well, of course not. He's SBC fodder and he goes into those uh, advanced SBCs. If we take a look at that filter, which you can use both as a bidding and a sniping filter, feel free to do so, just uh, not while I'm using it. <laughs> I don't know how you would be able to tell. Uh, anyways, so you don't actually need the league. We just go quality gold. We go position uh, right back and we go Brazil. And right now, they're selling for about 5,000 coins. I think Danilo is the cheapest one. Yep, right there, about 5K is uh, is Danilo. And then the other ones like Bruno Perez, who I have on the, uh, the transfer list uh, or the transfer targets. That one goes for like 11K because it's rare. It's the only rare option. Uh, to go with. So 4,900 would sell immediately. And we saw, you saw, we got them all for just over 2,000 coins and they would all sell pretty quickly at 4.9 thousand coins and probably would sell for like 5, 5.1 without any issue as well. Bruno Perez uh, as well. We got him for like eight something. Let's go ahead and take a look at his actual price. That's going to be about 10,000 coins. Ooh, a little less than I was expecting, 9.4, 9.4. So we made a little bit of profit, but not quite as much on Bruno as we did Danilo. And then we've also got the Argentinian right backs. Same concept. There's only two options as an Argentinian right back. Only two of them. It's Buffarini and it's Montiel in the Spanish first league and the second league. And it looks like Montiel is the cheapest one at about 5.9. And it sells pretty quickly at 5.9 as well. Probably could get six for him. And we've got two of those on the transfer list as well. So let's go ahead and get those uh, listed up and see if we can get those to sell. Make some profit there. A sign all. And if you guys want me to do a full video on sniping filters and bidding filters, let me know and I'll bring that out to you guys. So we've got Montiel, we bought him for three, four. We're gonna sell him for six, uh, was it? I think it was five, nine, right? I'm actually not 100% sure. Chat, remind me of that. I'm gonna go ahead and list the Danilos first. Um, and Danilo, I remember, was 4.9, and that's over double of what we got him on bid for, and we got several of him on bid. We got five on bid. This one, not for quite as good of a deal. Um, and my chat is saying it was 5.9, so I'll go ahead and list that for 5.9. Um, 4.9 for all of the Danilos. That's another 2.6, almost double of the price of that one. Another 2.6, almost double of the price of that one, making over 2,000 coins per card. And just like that, Took us like five to 10 minutes maybe at the most for us to get all these cards on bid and making well over 10,000 coins on it. So a thousand coins a minute, we will take that all day. 5.9, that's over 2,000 coins on Montiel. And then we've got the last Montiel, 5.9. And then we've got Bruno Perez. And that's the final one at, uh, that was 9.4. So still uh, close to a thousand coins after tax. Still profit, not as much as I wanted. Thought he was going for a little over 10K. I was incorrect about that. But now I wanna transition into what is probably a little bit more important of uh, a factor and a lot of questions that you guys have for me 
uh, revolve around this. It's the fact that you don't know whether you should keep or sell a certain card. What cards should you be holding on to? What are the ones that are going to rise in price? And which cards are you sh uh, are you sh uh, really trying to sell right now instead of hold on to? They're not going to rise very much. And realistically, the easiest way I can put this is the meta cards will rise. The meta cards will rise. When you think meta, you think of a French striker from Premier League, which I guess is Martial. But you get what I'm saying. The players that have great stats and great links, that is meta, all right? So those are the cards that are going to rise over the course of the next 48 hours. The cards that won't be good investments and some mistakes to stay away from are the investments in the likes of Ter Stegen. The investments that look good if you compare it to what the prices of certain cards were at the uh, end of FIFA 21 especially. You look at this card and you think, wow, that is 90 rated. And it's only 20,000 coins right now. That's super cheap. Once an SBC drops, it's going to rise a ton. Well, you're not completely wrong. It's going to rise over time, but it's going to take until probably around Black Friday before it actually becomes a worthwhile investment. And uh, by then, you've held on to that card for two months. Don't think it's a very good investment at this point. Even if it does rise by a thousand or two thousand once POTM Antonio comes out, which it probably won't, it's not a really good investment. You want to stay away from those high rated SBC fodder investments at all costs. Do not invest in SBC fodder right now unless it is a direct link to POTM Antonio. And even then, that's risky. Um, but it could work out. Still risky. I'm probably not going to go too deep into POTM Antonio investments. And if I do, I'm probably going to sell into the hype. I'm not going to wait till the actual SBC drops. So I would stay away from SBC fodder investments. Let's look at some investments that should work out and some that have already worked out for me. You see, I have 36,000 coins right now. Well, that's because I've got a lot of coins wrapped up in some cards. One of those is Kevin De Bruyne, 140,000 coins that I got him for. Well, he's already started to rise and he's not going to stop in his, anytime soon. He's a very meta card. He links Man City. Belgium's not a perfect link, but he does link to a couple of Belgians. Overall, he's a Premier League, really good player, and he plays for Manchester City. That's all you need. And he's up to 215,000 coins, which is about 75,000 coins above what I bought him for. Uh, and, uh, or what, not what I bought him for, but what when I got De Bruyne out of the uh, Hybrid Nations SBC, I should mention, because if you haven't seen that video, we packed him in that video. He was 140K. All right. And I decided instead of selling, I'm going to hold on to him because I know he's going to go up. And he's up 75,000 more coins, which is big. All right. That is a lot of profit just to hold on to a card for a few hours. So that is huge. And I don't think he's going to stop rising. I think he could easily hit 240, 250 by the time that the next video drops for you guys. Uh, so Kevin De Bruyne, great investment there. Anthony Martial. This is a really tricky one, guys. Anthony Martial is such a meta card. I mean, he fits the meta in its entirety. I mean, if there was a definition of meta in the textbook, Anthony Martial would be the picture next to it. The unfortunate part is he's extinct at 16,000 coins. Now, some people have brought up the fact that, oh, Anthony Martial, he kind of looks similar to Gabriel Jesus, who is 15,000 coins. And the reason I bring that up is because although Anthony Martial does have more value than Gabriel Jesus, he does. And because he's French, he's got slightly better stats, right? He's got a little bit better uh, of a card. And it's a little bit more desirable as well. This Martial is 16K and you don't know when EA are going to update the price range. So if you invest in him at 16,000 coins, even though right now on the market, he easily could be about 30,000 coins or 35,000 coins, he's only 16K. And by the time EA update his price range, it could be tomorrow, it could be in a week. And if it's in a week, well, at that point, there's so many people who have invested in Martial at 16K, but by the time EA actually update the price range, what's going to happen is they'll update it and it'll say 50,000 coins at his cap and somebody will list for 50K and then the word will get out, oh, Martial's price range got updated. Well, I've got three Martials on my transfer list. I'm going to sell them for 47K and then for 48 or 46K. And then the undercutting happens back to back to back to back to back to back for like two hours. And that card, a lot of the time, will drop below what it was extinct at. It'll drop to 14,000 coins. Now, there's two things to, to note there. One, there's a second opportunity to invest. 
even if you didn't buy him extinct, whether he does get below the price or not. Because two, the card will correct itself. If there's so much undercutting over the course of two hours, the card will eventually correct itself. And once it stops dropping and it starts to you say, okay, well, the card dropped all the way down to, let's say, 19,000 coins. And it, and it doesn't seem to get, be getting down to 18. You have to really snipe it for 18. And it's just sitting there. Some cards go up on the market for 19, and then they get bought slowly. And then it goes to 18,750, and then back up to 19,5. And it's just been sitting there for 30 minutes. That's a good sign that it's about to go back up. The supply has ended from the undercutting and it's going it's going to correct itself and it's going to start rising again which is why I'm going to wait on Martial as an investment and I'm just going to wait until the uh, price range gets updated. You can say the same exact thing for LaCroix. LaCroix is another card and a lot of people have even said St. Just is better than LaCroix in game. I don't know how true it is. I haven't used either. But he's capped at 30,000 coins and at a 79 rated card, you've got to question how well is this LaCroix going to hold its price? Is it going to be a bust or is it going to end up like Furland Mendy in FIFA 20, which was one of the most insane cards that was 80 rated and held its price for a long, long time. Looks like we sold most of the Danilos and the Montiels right there, so we made a decent bit of profit. Now let's go ahead and take a look at Erling Haaland, okay? Now Erling Haaland has the stats. There's no denying he might be one of the best striker cards, maybe the best base striker card in the game. But Erling Haaland is from Norway. And that doesn't really link to anything. And he's also from Dortmund. And although it links to starter squads really well, like Daniel Malin and Emre Chan and uh, Akanji on defense, you can build a nice Bundesliga team. But how many people are doing that? Not too many. Most people go Premier League to start off, including me, a Dortmund fan, which says a lot because I've, ha I've got Haaland on my transfer list. And Although I've also had De Bruyne on my transfer list, and I've also had Lukaku on my transfer list, which was a great investment uh, that we can use as an example. That Haaland, well, it's not entirely meta. It's a good card, and it'll do the work for you when it's in gameplay, but it's not meta. It doesn't fit meta in terms of the links that you need for ultimate team, okay? So this Lukaku, on the other hand, I bought for 49,000 coins, maybe a few minutes before I bought the Haaland, and the Lukaku's gone from 49,000 coins. Well, it's at 70K now. I've made 20,000 coins on that card. Because it's Chelsea. It's Stryker. Belgium. Just like De Bruyne. The Belgians have been working. Unfortunately, Erling Haaland has not gone up in price for me. In fact, I think he's dropped like 3,000 coins. Let's go ahead and take a look. And I know that I'm probably going to end up making profit on Haaland in the end. But was it a good investment? Absolutely not. Even if I make coins. Even if I make coins on Haaland, in the end, it was not a good investment because I spent time and coins, I spent my resources buying this Haaland early on in the game when I could have been investing in a Lukaku, when I could have been investing in somebody that was going up quickly during that same period. If you invest in somebody that goes up 10% over the course of two hours while there was somebody else that you could have invested in that went up 50 50%, in that same time frame, well, yeah, you made profit and it was a good investment, but it wasn't the best investment. It wasn't the perfect way to go. It wasn't the most efficient way to go. So we picked up a Timo Werner for 44,000 coins. I like that investment. He does have a Hunter card on it, which is cool. Also center mid, not sure how I feel about that. Don't think him being at center mid adds too much value. I think most people that buy Werner aren't using him at CDM. So, uh, I think it'll still be fine. I don't think too many people are actually looking at the uh, position. I know I wasn't when I bought it. Uh, so we've got that Timo Werner now, and it's already lower than what he is, and I think he'll go even higher throughout the night. Only problem is we only have 27,000 coins now, so I think what my best option would be is I'll take a you know 5% loss on that Haaland card, which is totally all right. Um, you know, you're going to take some L's every now and then as long as you limit those L's. Uh, I mean, our, our dubs today have been huge. That L is very, very tiny. So I'm going to take the coins from the Haaland. I'm going to, I know he's going to go up, but I, I want those coins liquid right now. I'm going to invest it in some other cards that are going to go up even higher and so I can have more coins to actively trade with. To finish off today's video, I did pick up a couple more uh, Chiesas. Uh, I also picked up an Ismail Sar. Got him for 31K. Got the Chiesa for 14. Uh, packed that one. 16 and 15. Uh, just going to list them all up for 18. Probably 18 to 50. 
And there goes my light in the background, but we're gonna deal with it because it's late and I'm tired and I don't wanna redo this take. So we're just gonna power through. And uh, that's gonna complete today's video. Hopefully you guys learned something. Hopefully it helped you out, answer some question. And if you have any more questions, you can always leave them in the comment section down below. You can always uh, hit me up on my stream. You can always comment on my stream in real time. I can answer your questions. You can send me a tweet. Um, but commenting down in the comment section works just fine here. And I'll try to get to as many questions as possible. And then we've got Ismail Asar for 31. We'll list it for 34. Just take a quick profit on those cards. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end of the video, go ahead and comment the color aquamarine. Nobody would have guessed that one. Aquamarine in the chat or in the comments down below. And I'll make sure to heart every single comment that has the word aquamarine in it. And if you can fit it into a sentence that doesn't give it away, bonus points. But you can just type aquamarine and I'll know. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.